Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this August 26th uh, edition of Pearls of Wisdom, which seems to be fitting nicely. Um, it's been a while since I've thought about recording this particular vlog, and to be honest, I won't be at all surprised if I end up re-recording this a couple of times, because I've had to think hard on uh, exactly the message I want to put out here. Specifically, uh, I want to talk today about the ongoing discussion around what's been labeled the opioid epidemic or the opi opioid crisis, uh, in particular in North America, but I guess uh, more broadly in the world, by I think a group of people who are largely well-intentioned, but maybe from my own personal perspective, I guess, and experiences, um, in some ways misinformed, I suppose. And it it's not just media, uh, it's certainly medical professionals as well who are sort of getting on board this anti-opioid train, uh, and physical therapy as well. Um, frankly, not a day goes by that I don't see, I think, a tweet from the Get PT First movement um, that sort of denounces the use of opioids in favor of physical therapy. And again, I think perfectly well-intentioned and well-meaning. But here's my, my issues with this. I'm going to present a sort of a, a different side of this whole discussion. And far be it for me to make light of addiction. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious and it's a tragic condition when it occurs, regardless of the substance that, uh, that is being abused or misused. It, so my one thought here is, we need to look at the, the, the causes of, of addiction and, and mental health disorders. And I know I'm not the first person to say that. Many others, including, I believe, President Obama, have said the same thing, and Prime Minister Trudeau here in Canada. If it wasn't opioids, it would be something else. It was prior to opioids ever being a thing, and it will be again after opioids are possibly gone, if uh, the current movements carry on in the same direction. So I don't know that the opioids are sort of the devil here. It's, it's more the, I think, the underlying causes of addiction and mental health, which again are very legitimate and, and are deserving of far more attention than I think they get. As a, a long-time advocate for people who live in chronic pain, um, I will say that my opinions are, are probably somewhat biased, but I, I hope mildly balanced and, and, and informed. For years, physiotherapy or rehab has worked well alongside opioids, and so I'm not entirely sure why um, groups seem to be now saying you can get one instead of the other. I would actually largely disagree in most cases. My experience has been that without adequate pain relief, my physical therapy treatments have been ineffective. I, uh, I would encourage you, if you're looking for ways to inform yourself, um, while these are getting a little bit long in the tooth now, uh, if you haven't done yourself the favor of reading Marnie Jackson's book, Pain, the Science and Culture of Why We Hurt, uh, you owe it to yourself to do so. Um, still, even though it was published, I want to say back in 2002, probably one of the best narrative uh, books on the topic of pain. And in particular, chapter 28 in this book describes the case of Dr. Frank Adams, who was a Kingston physician for many years treating patients with uh, otherwise incalcitrant chronic pain with high-dose opioids until our, uh, our college of physicians and surgeons came down on him, closed his practice, and he left. Another case that some of you might be a bit more familiar with more recently in the States was that of Dr. Uh, Dr. Hurwitz, uh, William Hurwitz, who's got a series, there's a series of, uh, of uh, stories about him in the New York Times from 2007. Uh, he was actually um, uh, found uh, criminally responsible uh, due to his practice of, of prescribing high-dose opioids and is serving 57 months in jail. He's actually out by now. Um, What's interesting about both of these, both of these stories, and what's interesting about a plethora of work in the field, is that, yeah, you know, sure, opioid-related deaths have probably increased some dramatic percent, whatever the number is that people like to cite, over the past two decades. But largely, you know, there's, there's, there's probably other reasons for that. 
Um, for one, availability is, is an issue. Um, people have learned more and efficient ways to inject these things into their bodies. And, um, so that, that argument, um, for me, doesn't hold a lot of water. But uh, what we also know is that people who suffer from long-term chronic pain without relief are at far higher risk of suicide. And the evidence is reasonably clear on that. Um, again, the two stories that I just described, Dr. Adams, Dr. Hurwitz, um, my own clinical experience, and any number of papers that, uh, to be honest, are a little bit here and there. There's some that suggest uh, suicidal ideation and suicidality are increased about two to three times in people with chronic pain. I'm looking at a, uh, an epidemiological study from Campbell and colleagues in the Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychiatry from 2015. Um, but uh, at the same time, to be fair, and again, trying to be balanced, there is some other work that suggests, for example, in adolescents with chronic pain. This was just published in the Clinical Journal of Pain. And, um, in fact, it's currently EPUB ahead of print, uh, that there was no higher rate of suicidal ideation amongst adolescents with chronic pain compared to those without. So again, just presenting the argument. But um, I, am, I am bothered by this sort of um, vilification of opioids and in particular people who are taking opioids. I think those are the ones who are suffering the most here. What we don't need anymore for a group of people who are already subject to a lot of skepticism every day is to further raise an eyebrow every time we see someone asking for opioids. I know that a misuse and abuse exists. I also know that physicians could probably use more information and more education on safe prescribing practices. But I don't believe that outlawing high-dose opioids is the way to go here. I'm reminded of, the, of a gun control argument that I heard maybe a decade ago now, that if you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. If you outlaw opioids, then only outlaws will have opioids. And those who really need them and really deserve them and could really benefit from them are having a harder and harder time accessing them. And um, that's tragic, to be fair. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't even really know what else to say on that. Um, we need to stop looking at everyone who's on opioids as an addict. Even people who are on opioids and think themselves may be addicts, I, I'm amazed at the amount of time I've spent over the past 10 years counseling my patients not on their addictions, but on the difference between addiction, physical dependence, and tolerance. I am physically dependent on coffee. If I don't get my coffee in the morning, I develop a bit of a headache usually, but I'm not addicted to coffee. I've never crushed coffee up and injected it directly into my veins. I've never robbed a coffee shop. I've never not paid the rent in order to buy more coffee. I've never felt bad about my coffee drinking. There are many people out there who are legitimately taking opioids for the purpose that they're intended, who have become scared, frankly, by the media attention to this and the attention from other groups and now believe that they may be addicts. So why don't, we, why don't we pile another problem on top of these folks, hmm? Let's now make them fearful that they're addicts. So I, I, I just want to offer a different view on this, a different take on this whole conversation. Yes, I, I, I agree that, um, that addiction is terrible, that many physicians could probably use more education on safe prescribing practices. Um, I like the idea of creating opioids that are more difficult to crush, for example, like the oxyneo. But I cannot get behind, and in frank, frankly, I will, I will stand up, put my hand on my heart, and vehemently speak out against the criminalization of people who are taking opioids. Let's, uh, let's step back for a minute, maybe, from, from all this rhetoric, and let's really look at the, at the sufferers here and uh, think about what would happen if you were in that situation. All right, all for now.